Welcome guys. This is a very basic tutorial on how to manage your photos that's using Adobe Lightroom. So the things that we're going to cover is importing, tagging, keyword tagging, sorting, selecting, basic editing, and then exporting. That should give you a good idea of where to start when using Adobe Lightroom. There are a ton of tutorials online that you can go find and lynda.com has a whole section on Adobe Lightroom for photographers. Also in your local area it's highly probable that you can find some night classes or day classes on the weekends that will give you some more specific instructions on how to use Adobe Lightroom. So let's get started. So what you have here is just an empty Lightroom. Yours may have photos in it. For this tutorial I have left it completely blank. There are no photos. So the first thing we have to do is get our photos into Lightroom. So we're going to go ahead and click on the import tool. Now, if you have kind um, of connected devices, I have an iPad, or if you have any uh, cameras or anything like that, they'll show up in this list and you can import directly from there. Or in this case, we have put the files in a folder on a hard drive. So we're going to go ahead and find those find those files. There's on my desktop and we have a Midnight Con SD. Now there's a couple of things to think about here. These files are actually in a folder on my desktop. That's not where they're going to live permanently. Or if you're importing from a device like an iPad or iPhone or camera or whatnot, you're going to want to copy the files over to a new directory. and That's going to give you a, a list of of things over here to do we'll talk about in a second. But if your files are already on the hard drive where they're going to live permanently, instead of copying and making duplicates, you can just hit add and it'll add them to Lightroom's catalog without moving them. But in this case we are going to move them. So we're going to hit the copy. And these are the files that are in the folder that we're going to move over. So a couple of things to look at here. We don't care about smart previews. Um, we're not going to add them to any special collection. You can if you want to. We're not going to, uh, we are not going to rename them, so we'll leave that blank. We're not going to do any develop settings. Those are all advanced features, so we'll leave that blank. And all we're going to do is pick a destination where we want these to go. So in the case of this workshop, we're going to put them in a separate folder underneath current projects. We're going to call it workshop. And this is how you organize your files on your hard drive. And now we're going to go ahead and hit import. So Lightroom is going to import all of the images. It's showing you a copy of the image here and the progress that it's doing here. Now once it imports the images, it's going to build previews based on how Lightroom is set up. And by default, it does just basic previews. What that is, is it's building a little thumbnail and showing you what it looks like so that when you look at the list module right here under library, it's very fast. But if you happen to select on a specific image and open it up, then it's going to give you a one-to-one -one preview so that you can actually see what it looks like. So we'll go back to our grid. So now all of our images are in the system. One of the things that's pretty important is that you label your images. If you'll notice over here, we'll move that out of the way, I have captions and titles for a variety of my images. Now this information is already here because these are files that I already have imported into another catalog. You'll want to come in here and you'll want to add a title, a basic caption, and then some basic keywords so that way you can find it at a later date. And you'll find your keywording right here. So this is where you will add in your keywords and this is a basic suggestion list of keywords you've already used. Maybe this is going to be the address of the property that you're building or the type of product that you're selling. But in this particular case this says Colorado Mule Deer in it. So if I ever wanted to come back in my list and find it I could click on text I could type in deer and all the deer pictures would show up or a particular address or a particular product. Those are the things that are important in your keyword list so that it's easier to find these items. 
So this is all my photographs. And finding files doesn't really become apparent until you start loading up this list. I've been shooting for over 20 years, so in my list I have over 100,000 images. So now trying to find all of my deer photos from four, five, six, even seven years ago makes it a lot easier if I could just type in a keyword to go find them. So now that we have all of our photos in here, we have to look at the photos and decide what's important. So we can double click these and we can scroll through them and we can find the ones that we like and then we can star rate them down here. So I'm going to give that one a four because I think I can work with it. That one's a really nice one. I'll give that one a five. These are Colorado um, Rocky Mountain Timberwolves, by the way. There's another one that I think I can work with. Oh, I like that one better. He's actually smiling. So I'm going to unrate this one. And I'm going to go ahead and select this one. There's a cute one. My wife, Amanda. There's a nice picture of a deer. And there's a nice picture. So now we've got a several tag that we're interested in. We can come back to our grid right here. We can come up to attributes. We can say only show me photos that have a rating. So now I'm looking at these and I want to do a little bit of touch up. So I'm going to come inside here. Let's look at this guy. We'll double click on him. I want to do some touch up. This is a good photo. So I'm going to go to the develop module. And the Lightroom has a very powerful editing tool. It's not as powerful as Adobe Photoshop, but it really does get the job done. So now that I've got my photo in here, the first thing that I want to do is I want to crop the photo the way I think it's going to be. And again, these are real basic editing techniques just to kind of help get you by. There's a lot of tutorials on every single one of these tools. But in this case, we're just going to crop it. I'm going to keep the same aspect ratio so my lock is locked. And I'm just going to drag it from the corner down. Then I'm going to pull it up a little bit. And then I'm going to set my photo right about there. And then hit enter. So now let's let's add some color to this. I'm going to go ahead and just do some basic edits over here. Here's all of my tools. So I'm going to add a little color here. Warm it up just a hair. Add a little bit of clarity into it. Maybe add some uh, deepen the blacks a little bit and a little bit of contrast. So there, now I've got some basic edits on a photo that I really like and I'm ready to use that one. So what I do is anything that I've edited and I'm ready to use, I tag it with a green so that I can go find it later. So let's see if there's anything else in here that we want to use. Here's a, here's a really nice photo. We're going to go ahead and crop this one down. There we go. Let's see, warm them up a little bit. Add some clarity into there. Look at those teeth just pop right out. So that looks really good, so I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it green. All right, this is a good point about talking about some photos that typically I see out of clients, either phones or even their digital SLRs. And, they're, and a lot of times that it's hard to get good light so photos become underexposed. So I'm gonna bring in another photo that's underexposed and show you quickly how to get all that detail back. So let's go ahead and jump over to our library module. Let's go to import. We're gonna go back to our folder that we imported from earlier on our desktop. So let's go ahead and put it into Photo Projects. Okay, let's go down to Current Projects. This is where we put it earlier. And we can either 
leave this checked to make sure that it goes into the subfolder. But since our subfolder is already created, we can uncheck that. We can come down here and tell it we want to put it into the workshop folder, which we had earlier. So we'll go ahead and hit import. So it imported the one file. That's all we see because this says previous import. If we go up to all photographs and we search through here, we should see the new image in here. So we'll scroll down. They're in order by date. So there's the new image that we're going to work with. So this one's underexposed. So we need to brighten this up. And you can actually pull a lot of light out, even if it's a lot more underexposed than this, or if you have really deep shadows like in Windows and stuff, you can pull a lot of light back in from your files in Lightroom. So before we pull up the shadows, we're going to crop it so that way we can see what we're working with. So let's bring this photo in quite a bit. He looks like he's about to have lunch. So now let's pull in our shadow detail. So we're going to pull this up. If you watch Mr. Squirrel there, a lot of detail came in, but it's still pretty dark. We don't want to overexpose too much because it'll blow it out quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it right there and work with my other sliders. So now I'm going to pull up my whites and bring him in. But it's starting to get a little too bright over here. So I'm going to bring down the highlights. And then I'm going to add a little bit of black to it. And now that we've got a nice balance, I'm just going to bump the exposure up just a little bit. Add in a little bit of warmth some of the colors and then the final is we're going to add in the detail watch how he just stands out so now we took that that seriously underexposed image we got a very workable image if you want to click on here to see a little bit more detail you can just click once and it'll bring in the detail and you can see all of you can see reflections in his eyes everything's there all of his whiskers Click again and it zooms it back out, and there you go. So now I have I can go back to my library. I can go look at my, my photos. I can turn off the attributes. Here's all my images. I have some that are rated, and I have some that are colored. See, that one's rated but not colored. That one's green. So you have your stars and your ratings. Now I can go back to my attributes. I can come over and say, show me everything that's green. So now I have just the two photos that I've already edited and I'm ready to export to use on my website or in print or wherever it's going to be. So this is real important part to um, add in here. These files that are over here in the library All of these files, these are the original files in the original locations. If I look at my hard drive over here, I can see where everything's at. Even though I've made edits to this file, if I come back to the develop module, even though I've made edits to the files, these edits are non-destructive. So Lightroom has made a list of everything that I did and put it in a separate file. So I haven't really touched the original file, which is very important. If you hit reset, everything goes back to the original. And that's important to know. So that way, if, if I wanted to, at a later date, I can come back over to here, find my file, I can right click, I can say click create a virtual copy, and then I can start editing the virtual copy right from scratch. So that way I can start all over if I wanted to. So I can double click, go to develop, hit reset, and then I can do something totally different with this image than what I did before. But at the end of the day, this is just a, uh, these are just copies of, of, of instructions of what we've told Lightroom to do to it, that we have never touched the original file. So we'll come over here and delete our copy. It's right there. So now we're ready to export. 
So I'm going to click on one of the images because we're going to create an export preset as well. We're going to right click, we're going to hit export. This is everything that I can do during an export. And again, like I mentioned earlier, all we're doing is we're just going to export a copy with all of our edits in it. We're not going to actually modify the original file. So I'm going to tell it to go ahead and I'm going to choose what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and choose where I want this export to go. Because these the originals are going to be on the hard drive stored safely away, I'm just going to export everything that I need to the desktop. I'm going to use it and then when I'm done I'm going to delete it from the desktop because my original is still on the hard drive where we import it at. So this way I can create an export for the web. Maybe it's for a slider. I can create an export for our shopping cart or maybe I need to send something to the brochure company that they're going to print up for us. But in any case, I'm going to do my exports from here, save them to the desktop. When I'm done using them on the desktop, then I'm just going to delete them. That way I don't have 30 different copies of the same image floating around somewhere. I'm, going, I'm not going to rename it, so I don't care about file naming. It's not a video, so I don't care about that. This is going to go to the web, so I'm going to go ahead and hit a quality of 80. That's a good size for the web. And I have some rules for the web so that I'm constrained to. Right now, a slider image is 1920 on the longest edge. That's what I tell most of you guys to build your uh, slider images at. But in this case, this is going to be a regular file for a post. So I'm just going to call it 1024. That's going to be a good size for a blog post. This is output. We're just going to sharpen it a little bit with for the screen, we're going to do standard. Adobe does really well. And the reason that we sharpen it a little bit is because it's going to shrink the large file down to something that's a little bit smaller. So we want to retain that detail. We want all of our information left in there. We don't care about watermarking. And we don't care what we're going to do afterwards. So now everything in here is ready. This is a good uh, export for all of our blog posts. So I'm going to hit add to create a preset. We're going to call this blog posts, and we're going to put it under user presets and hit create. So now under user presets, we have one called blog posts. So let's go ahead and export this. And if you saw it up there, you saw the bar go really fast. Let's scoot this over. It actually dropped it right onto the desktop right here. So here's our image that we just created. And, and this is on the desktop, so we're going to use this in our web page. And when we're done, we're just going to delete it from the desktop because we won't need it anymore. If we need another copy of this, we'll just go back and get it later and just do another export. So now that we have that one and we have our preset, let's go use our preset to export our wolf. So here's our wolf. So now we're going to right click. And in, instead of going from export to export, we're going to go under user defined presets and we're going to select blog post. And this is automatically going to put our photo right on our desktop. So we don't have to go through and remember all those settings. And then we can open this up and we can take a look at it and see what it is. And now there's our Rocky Mountain Wolf ready to go. And it's all nice and crisp and clean. It's very usable image and it's at a very fair website size. So I hope that helps. I'm sure I missed something in there, but if you have any more questions, feel free to email me and I will go over them.